Hi guys, this is Miss Heisman. Today we're going to be talking about a dynamic list. And so I just kind of have made a little mock-up of a dynamic list for us so that you can kind of practice how it works. So the idea here is that I have a text box. So if you don't have the starter code from me because you forgot to download it or you can't find it, you can always recreate this. It's basically just a text box. There's a horizontal arrangement with three buttons, a save, show, and delete button. And then I've got an empty label at the bottom that is called show label. And I haven't done any coding for this. It's just the shell, just the shell of the app set up in the designer view. So we can go to the blocks. The first thing is like, let's say that we want to create a to-do list. So we're going to um, type in what we want to do and hit save, and it's going to save it to the list hit show, it should show us what's in the list, and then we should be able to delete something from the list as well. So let's start off with the save button because that's the first thing your user is going to do. So we're going to pull out the when save button is clicked because your user, first action they really do is going to be to type in and then save. So we're going to have them, uh, first off, your whole program has to initialize an empty list. So initialize global, and we're going to call this to-do list. And notice I use the word list in the name of the global variable. And that is because if I've got five different variables, one's for score, one's for time left, one's for something else, and then I've got a to-do list, I'm going to forget which one's the list if I don't actually put list in the name. Always name things by what they are and what they do. In this case, it's a to-do list and it's a list. So I'm leaving it as to-do list, as the name of it. So I realize that seems wordier than it needs to be, but trust me, once you start getting big enough code, you're going to want longer and longer names for things because it makes them much easier to find and use. So I can't set a list to zero. So instead, I'm going to come over here to lists and I'm going to create an empty list. So as soon as the app fires up, it's going to create an empty list. Now, the user is going to enter something in the text box and hit save, and it's going to add to this empty list. So I'm going to come over here to lists, add items to list, stick that in there. I need to get the name of my list for the top piece. And then item, I want it to be whatever's in the text box. So I'm going to go find text box text. Ah, there it is, text box one, text, that's now going in the list. Now, as soon as they hit the save button, I also want the, the uh, text box to clear itself out because it's super annoying to have to delete things to enter a second thing in the list, right? So I'm just going to go click on the text box itself and I'm going to set text box text to, after I save it to the list, then I'm going to set the text box text to an empty string or a null string right there so that it's nice and empty, clears it out, great. But none of this does me any good if I can't see it. And I can't see it because it's way back in the background. It is like back in the green room in the script of our show. It is in order for the audience, the user to see it, we got to pull that sucker out and put it right up front on stage. And the way to do that is to show it to our user. So that's what the show button is for. So I'm going to click on the show button and pull show button click because that's what the user is going to click on when they want to see the list. And then I've got this show label right there. And so I'm going to set the show label text to be snap in there, uh, the to-do list again. So I'm going to have it just be the whole to-do list is going to show up there. So here's my emulator and I'm going to try it. I'll walk the dog, save, do the dishes, save, and now I'm going to hit show. Walk the dog and do the dishes both show up in the label. Great. Now we're on to our last piece, which is we want to be able to delete things off the list. Well, lists organize things based on how they went in.
So the first thing in the list is index 1, the second thing is index 2, the third thing is index 3. Now that's slightly different depending on your programming language, but in App Inventor, which is what I'm using, index, the first thing is index 1. If you're doing this in Python, the first thing in a Python list is always index 0. But in App Inventor, it starts with 1. So if you have a lot of coding experience in other languages, you just have to sort of adjust that for this one. The first thing is index 1. So I want to delete something. I'm going to go click on the delete button. So when delete button is clicked, now instead of add items to the list, I want to remove items from a list, which is, I can replace, there it is, remove. So remove item from list, index. So again, I have to come up here and get the name of the list. Now I'm just going to go with assuming that my person does it in order. I'm just going to go get a number block here and I'm going to say index number one. So it's just going to remove index number one. So again, I've got my list, walk the dog, do the dishes. This one is put up the decorations. I'm having a party, I don't know. So, <laughs> T-I-O-N-S, <laughs> I typed it the first time, I swear. Hit save, show, and now I want to delete. So now I've walked the dog, I can hit delete show and it removes the first thing on the list because I told it to remove index one. That means that do the dishes is now in index one. So if I hit delete, that's correct. Walk the dog or do the dishes disappears. And then all you have is put up the decorations, which I can also delete and then show myself. And now I have nothing in my list. So the idea here is that you can save to a list, you can show the list to yourself, and you can delete things from the list. So go ahead and try this out. Make your own list and go ahead and show it to me. Thanks, guys. See you next time.